Whelan Presley and Van Ho Funeral Homes have been serving Quad City families and veterans for over 100 years. Whelan Presley is located in Rock Island, Milan, Reynolds, and Van Ho in East Moline, proudly supporting WQPT. Alternatives is a proud supporter of WQPT and has been serving our community for 40 years. Alternatives provides professional guidance to maintain independence and quality of life for older adults and adults with disabilities. Iowa schools are about to open their doors, but not without a lot of new rules and ways state lawmakers say those schools should become more transparent. Teaching in Iowa in 2023 in the cities. Iowa lawmakers concentrated on the schools in this past session, sending a slew of new regulations that follow a more conservative viewpoint. Lawmakers say they want to make schools more transparent to parents, safer for children, and less socially progressive than they say our schools are right now. But not every change from state lawmakers is easily understood, and districts across the state are now faced with how they will put into place everything their lawmakers want and some parents expect. We talked with Bettendorf School Superintendent Dr. Michelle Morris about what's being implemented and how it's being put into place as we begin the 2023-2024 school year. So what can the students expect as they start off this new school year? Well, they can expect that we'll be really excited to see everybody and welcome our students and our families back. Um, our teams have been busy this summer. Um, our students and families at Neil Armstrong Elementary School will come back to a new um, HVAC or air conditioning unit. So that entire unit's been replaced. So that's always good to a more energy efficient um, system. Um, each summer we pick classrooms um, in our buildings to recarpet and refresh from a painting perspective. So we'll have some facelifts um, to some of our educational spaces. I know at Paul Norton, um, the gymnasium just got a, a remake. Um, so some fresh paint, um, it looks gorgeous in there. It makes it look a lot bigger. And then, um, you know, we've got new elementary curriculum. Um, a couple years ago, we adopted a new math curriculum um, across all five of our elementary um, buildings. And this year, we'll be rolling out our new English language arts program called um, CKLA by Amplify. So we're very excited. Um, teachers have been asking for that continuity across all the buildings. And so students can expect that and just um, that we're here, ready so to welcome them. So explain how that is teaching English differently. I'm not aware of this program. Um, it's just a, it's a new, or it's just one of the curriculums that exists for language arts. Mm -hmm. So um, we've been on the past couple years, um, very focused on the science of reading and stepping back and making sure that all of those fundamental skills, prerequisites to teaching children to read like phonics, phonemic awareness, phonological development are in place. We've done that through um, a training program called Letters. Um, language essentials for teachers of reading um, science. And two thirds of our elementary teachers and all of our preschool teachers have been trained in letters. And so as over the last couple years, we've had a um, group of teachers, administrators and the elementary principals looking through different curriculums for language arts to identify what one best aligns with the science of reading and what one will serve the needs of our students in Bettendorf community schools. Um, and so the team selected and recommended to the board a product called CKLA. So it's just one of the curriculums that exists out there. Um, it and is a concern though, because we've been seeing you know, uh, uh, reading scores diminish um, and fall behind. And, and a lot of that uh, people put towards COVID and the problems with the pandemic. And you also have that learning loss during the summer when the kids come back. Um, how critically important is it that, that Bettendorf makes sure that the kids are reading, especially up to the third grade level, I believe. It's such a critically important period of time where kids should be reading. 
Um, absolutely. Every school district, including ours, wants to make sure that students have those foundational reading skills. Um, we know with the new stand, you know, the standards that have come in over the past few years, um, that reading is across all disciplines. So there's reading involved in math, science, social studies, all of your um, different curricular areas. We take that very seriously and why we um, uh, now, almost two years ago, decided we really wanted to dig in to the latest research around um, the science of reading. Um, we have two, we are blessed in Bettendorf to have two trainers, um, letters trainers amongst our staff. And we offered that training program up to all of our preschool through fifth grade teachers, both general education and special education. We're also um, expanding it into middle school. So they have a a sister component to letters called Aspire. And in our middle school this year, um, we'll be working with middle school teachers because we know that there are some students that have those gaps or the um, skill gaps in certain areas and aren't as fluent of readers or struggle maybe in the comprehension end of reading. And so we wanna make sure we, our teachers um, have the resources, the training, um, and the skills they need to work with students at all levels, right? And so that we provide the best opportunity. What we saw, um, and I apologize, but what we saw, I just wanna finish this thought, um, last spring um, after having about two thirds of our teachers finish all or most of the volume one of letters training, those are literacy scores. Um, State of Iowa has mm -hmm. us assess students three times a year. Um, around students' literacy, and for those that need support, we provide intervention. But the growth we saw in our student population across all of our elementary schools was just, um, it was exciting. Um, there was some really strong growth, um, and we attribute it to that very specified training um, in all of those foundational skills for reading. So we're excited to see where it goes. I just remember I had a real problem with reading. Mm -hmm. um, it, 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 and it ended up being very frustrating as a child in second, third, and fourth grade is that you know I, I'd have to go back. I didn't retain anything from the page before. Is that the real problem sometimes? It's just that kids just get frustrated and just don't believe they can do it. And, and how do you break down that barrier? That's a great question. I think for any student, whether it's reading, math, science, when things are frustrating, right, we have to work with them like our teachers do. They're great about that differentiation and figuring out what is, what is the, um, what's causing the struggle for the student, but then also developing that efficacy in students and their intrinsic motivation um, to see that they can, with perseverance and support from their families, from teachers, um, and with the right intervention materials and curriculum materials, they can um, overcome those challenges and um, go on to be fluent readers, strong readers, and strong scholars. Yeah, because as you said, I mean, it, your ability to read goes throughout mm -hmm. your entire educational system and every subject is impacted by that. You're now heading into a new school year with a lot of new mandates from the state of Iowa. <laughs> uh, let's, let's talk about that for a moment. Uh, have you seen any impact of what's called the school voucher system? Have you seen any loss of students um, or families due to that? You know, I was just looking at our numbers this morning um, in preparation for coming and speaking with you today. We, at this time, have not felt a significant um, fluctuation one way or the other. Were you worried about that? You know, I don't know if worried is the right word. It's something we have to be mindful of, but that's where I step back and say, whether there was the voucher program or not, Iowa has been for quite some time an open enrollment state, right? And so parents have had choice about if, if I didn't feel that district met my students and my family's needs, we could open enroll to a district close by or far away. Um, in theory, if a parent wanted their child in a school district in Des Moines, if they were committed to driving, mm -hmm. I know that's a bit extreme, but right. but that's parents have had choice um, here in Iowa through that through it being an open enrollment state. So we've always um, in Bettendorf been mindful that parents have those options. And in our area, right, with four school districts so close in proximity, we want to make sure that we are focused on providing the students in our district um, the 
the best education, the most rigorous education, but also the most well-rounded education. So in talking with families who have had questions about the ESA program, about whether it's right for them or not, um, we talk about all the opportunities from an extracurricular standpoint, um, fine arts, clubs, after school activities, athletics that we feel we have um, that make us stand out from other schools, public or private or charter in the area. Um, but at the end of the day, parents have to make the decision that's best for them and their families. Um, so as I said, um, when we started the um, conversation, we in Bettendorf haven't seen a significant fluctuation yet. Um, time will tell as this program, you know, continues to evolve from the state. I mean, it's new. Just, I believe applications had to be in June 30th. Mm -hmm. And so families are probably just finding out whether or not they qualified for one. Um, but we're gonna continue to stay focused on what we do and that's putting st students first and providing a very rigorous, um, but also relevant curriculum, um, curriculum and educational opportunities as well as those extracurriculars from the fine arts to the athletics and all the other co-curricular activities that makes a great student. The other big change, of course, is what's going to be in your school library. And you have some schools, uh, Urbandale is one of them, that's removed close to 400 books from their library because they may not meet what the state had mandated as far as uh, what students should be able to not read in, in this case. Uh, Urbandale saying that they took these books out almost uh, to the point that they don't want to find their teachers in any way, shape, or form um, in, in any type of trouble. Has Bettendorf had to take a look at its library books or the books inside the classroom? Have you had to remove books? Or, or what is the status of that as far as your school district is concerned? That's a great question. I think you know the law just went into effect July 1st. We um, will and, not be and, enforced until January 1st of 2024. And so districts are looking for clarification from the Department of Education. You are correct. And we just had a hearing where it was pretty much going, eh. That is, um, we just came off of a state conference um, last week and we're hearing similar things. Um, we're still waiting and hopeful that we will get some guidance from the state. Um, we've in Bettendorf are working with teachers and our librarians, especially our school librarians, um, to reflect on what books are in our um, libraries, but also um, working with our um, other districts in the area as well as our local area education agency. Um, we want to make sure um, you know, we, we're very reflective of this law before we make any we don't want to make knee-jerk reaction, you know, decisions, but at the same time, we want we will always be compliant to the law. We are not going to do anything to intentionally break the law, and so um, we haven't made any drastic changes at this point in time. Um, we continue to have all of our school libraries through a product called Destiny um, have our catalog of our books on our websites. They were there before the law um, was enacted on July first. Um, and we'll just continue as teachers come back from summer vacation, we'll work with our teacher librarians um, to say, okay, what does the law say? What do we need to do? And are there any changes we need to make? Legislature really has been underlining the fact that they believe that school districts need more transparency towards parents, that parents need to be greater involved in school districts. As a superintendent, I'm sure you would somewhat fight back saying we're already as transparent as possible. We deal with our parents all the time. Are there changes because of what the legislature did that makes you even more transparent? I mean, how, do, how does that change this year compared to last? You know, again, just like the other laws that have been enacted, we're taking some time to reflect on exactly what those requirements are. But in terms of transparency, I feel like Bettendorf Community School District has done an outstanding job over the years, even prior to my arrival, of um, having multiple ways and multiple opportunities for parents to be engaged and involved. So um, we have a student information system called Infinite Campus that parents can create their parent accounts. They can get access to students' attendance and grades. Um, we have a learning management system called Canvas, um, and that really came to the forefront during COVID when you had those hybrid approaches to learning. But every parent has the opportunity to link to their student or students, if they have multiple students, um, Canvas accounts, and that gives them access to all of their um, curricular 
um, materials that the teachers are using and assignments. And um, so if I'm a middle school or high school student, I would have access to, um, in middle school, all six of my students, teachers and the classes they're taking. High school, the same, we're in a, a block, four classes a day, and at elementary. So we're very proud of that, that parents have access to that. We also have on our website, curricular resources for parents. Other ways that we um, provide transparency or access for parents to be engaged um, through our open houses each year at our buildings. Um, we do an elementary curriculum night for parents. Um, middle school tomorrow night is hosting a parent night for parents to come. Anybody new to the school or wanting to learn more can come in and they'll go over the ins and outs of what it's like to be a middle schooler, um, including curriculum and other you know, co-curricular activities. We have our school improvement advisory committee that parents and community members and staff are a part of. Um, we dig in to um, topics of interest to that committee. So last year, that committee helped us. We're um, getting ready to launch a new website for our district and we really sought um, parent, teacher, staff, and community input on what do you want to see on a website? What makes it useful and meaningful to you? So those are ways that we're transparent or give parents opportunities. PTAs, PTOs, and our boosters. Um, I know they're looking um, for more parents to be involved. They want them um, and volunteers in our schools. We welcome any parent that wants to help us out and can give time. We recognize people have busy schedules and there's always work um, if they're you know, working parents. But um, we feel like we have tremendous opportunities for parents to know about our district, be engaged with our district in school board meetings. Um, on average, we have about two a month um, and we want, we live stream those. So if they aren't able to be in person, they can watch and learn um, those agendas and all of the materials are posted pre and post those board meetings. So um, I think we feel we're doing a great job. But again, we will, we're gonna continue to reflect on that law and if we need to make adjustments, um, we will, um, because we are not going to be, we will always be compliant with the law. Because the other point that was very active in the legislature, of course, is LGBTQ issues, mm -hmm. uh, trans issues. Um, it's such a tough time for so many students. Um, they're, they're discovering themselves. They're finding out more about themselves. And sometimes they didn't want their parents necessarily involved. School districts are a microcosm of society. Mm -hmm. And your teachers are now caught in the middle of what's best for the student. How does the district deal with these new laws as well? And once again, you say you need to be compliant, of course. Absolutely, and we were. So there was some legislation passed um, last year, even during the school year, that yes. made some adjustments. Um, we immediately um, complied, made the adjustments we needed to, sent out even communication to our family and our community, our families, excuse me, and our communities uh, um, about how we were responding to those changes. Um, to your point that we're a micro, microcosm of that and students oftentimes um, really look to teachers and other support staff for direction and help when they're struggling, um, we will continue to focus on the whole student, not just the academic side of the student, but our, the social emotional well-being of our students and our staff. Um, we have counselors, we um, work with social workers, um, and we're gonna work with those families like we always have. And we have a plan in place that as students um, who need support, our counselors will also bring in families um, and we'll work with the whole family unit to make sure that we set up whatever it is, a plan, um, um, a 504 if a student should need it for a reason, if they qualify for special education services and need an, an individual individualized education plan, we're gonna work with that student and their family to develop a personalized plan of support for whatever they need. Um, and we'll make adjustments. If we have a student who's identified as trans um, and wants to use an alternative restroom, then we're gonna work with them and their family to put a plan in place so that they can still access their education, but in a way that makes them feel included and supported. How important is it to perhaps increase funding for, as you meant, mm -hmm. school counselors, for the mental health aspect um, for, for, our, for our children? Because uh, so many kids may be falling through the cracks without adequate care. I appreciate you asking that question. Absolutely essential. 
Um, I was actually a couple weeks ago, had the opportunity with a team from our district to present to the State Children's Mental Health Board. Um, we were lucky and blessed to have received um, close to about $250,000 worth of grant funding through state and federal funds last school year really focused on social emotional behavioral health. And one of those specific grants um, was written for our middle school to develop what we call a therapeutic learning center. So um, that grant afforded us to provide um, an extensive amount of training for all staff at the middle school around trauma-informed practices, um, collaborative problem solving, setting, getting our um, multi-tier systems of support structures in place so that um, tier one support is support for all students in the classroom. So how do we strengthen that for teachers and how do we help teachers um, strengthen their tool belt of resources, so to say, and then tier two, a um, little more intensive support, and tier three, the most intensive support. So that might be one-on-one -on -one counseling, that might be a group, um, that might be access to the therapeutic learning center, which um, at the middle school is a specific room that's set up in a way for students who need to go and just reset, get regulated again. Um, they have access to mental health professionals in that space. Um, and we have that space thanks to grant funding. Um, our plea to the state mental health board and as I talk with local legislators is how do we take the money that's been set aside for competitive grants and create a funding structure statewide for all of the school districts in Iowa? Because I know we're not the only ones with right. students struggling. And how do we get those resources so all students in Iowa um, can benefit from that? So last year we reset um, refocused around the whole um, social emotional behavioral health for staff and students and really had a dedicated approach um, to that last year. We have just a few moments left. 2023, mm -hmm. it's always the fresh start. It's always mm -hmm. a new school year. Does that get you excited about uh, this Absolutely. Coming? I mean, while we enjoy summer and having time to get planned and ready for the new school year, I miss our students and I miss our families and we couldn't be more excited to welcome them back at our open houses starting on August 17th and our community expo and um, student makers market and uh, food. I hear food trucks are coming this year, so come well. on out. Um, students are, we also have our spirit fair with our cheerleaders and um, our dance team that will be kicking things off just the start of the school year is exciting, right? Fresh start, new learning. Um, we have the best staff in the area and um, they do amazing work with our students and our families. And so can you tell I'm excited to kick off the new school year? Um, I love what I do. Our thanks to Bettendorf School Superintendent, Dr. Michelle Morris. This is out and about for August 19th through 25th. Grab your paddles for Floatzilla at Lake Potter in Sunset Park the 19th, while Moline's Festival Mo Live takes place at the Vibrant Arena the 25th and 26th. Alternating Currents Festival continues through the 20th. And it's time for the Bow Arts Festival Art Fair at the Figgy Art Museum the 19th and 20th. Join downtown East Moline at Runners Park August 19th for Freedom Fest. New Boston hosts their annual Fish and Chicken Fry the 20th 25th at 5, or join the February Family Fun Day on the 19th, while the Martin Luther King Jr. Community Center hosts a Family Fun Day and Parade on the 19th. Cordova Dragway hosts the World Series of Drag Racing the 24th through the 27th. The River Center hosts Planet Funk Con the 25th through the 27th. There's a historic parish house tour and lecture at First Evangelical Lutheran Church on the 19th. Thursday Night Groove at Schwebert Park entertains on the 24th. Casey Donahue performs at the Rust Belt on the 19th. Tunes in Town present North of 40 at DeWitt's Lincoln Park on the 22nd. Centennial Park West presents a free concert on the 19th, while Big Rock Candy Mountain takes over the Black Box Theater August 17th through the 20th. For more information, visit WQPT.org. Electric Larry has been part of the city's music scene for decades, a lover of blues and country music. We caught up with him at Moline's Black Box Theater, where he played one of his originals. So here's Electric Larry with I'm Still Here Hurting.
I'm sitting hurting over you I'm sitting here hurting over you I'm sitting here don't know what to do I'm sitting here looking at the wall I'm sitting here looking at the wall I'm sitting here wondering what went wrong I'm sitting here wishing you were home I'm sitting here wishing you were home I'm sitting here wondering what went wrong I'm sitting here crying over you I'm sitting here crying over you I'm sitting here don't know what to do But darling I know I love you But darling I know I love you But darling I can't go on without you I'm sitting here hurting over you I'm sitting here looking at the wall I'm sitting here wishing you were home I'm sitting here crying over you But darling, I know I love you But darling, can't go on without you But darling, I know I love you But darling Electric Larry with I'm Still Here Hurting, performed at Moline's Black Box Theater. On the air, on the radio, on the web, on your mobile device, and streaming on your computer, thanks for taking some time to join us as we talk about the issues on the cities. Presley and Van Ho Funeral Homes have been serving Quad City families and veterans for over 100 years. Whelan Presley is located in Rock Island, Milan, Reynolds, and Van Ho in East Moline, proudly supporting WQPT. Alternatives is a proud supporter of WQPT and has been serving our community for 40 years. Alternatives provides professional guidance to maintain independence and quality of life for older adults and adults with disabilities.